Hey everybody, welcome back. I am Derek with Flux Studio and Gallery. And in this video, we are going to be talking about plates and I'm also going to be throwing a few. I had quite a few orders for plates leading up to Christmas and uh, I still have one more to finish up this month. So I'm gonna show you a couple plates that I do, kind of explain what I like about them, what I don't, and why I do what I do. So this is just a very simple, elegant, uh, just kind of a minimalist approach to dinner plates. I do like the short wall. I like how it's just, you know, like I said, very simple, very clean, not much to it, not a lot of detail to get lost in with these dishes. Um, what, what is kind of challenging about these dishes is stacking them, right? They don't have much of a, a foot, as you can see, and making them all exactly that size can be a challenge. You know, I'm usually, you know, within a, a quarter, three sixteenths of an inch on everything. I like to be as close as possible, but stacking these, they can tend to want to slide around in the cabinet. So that's one thing that is tough for me with these dishes. Uh, this is a dish, this shape, I've been making more more of. This is kind of, I guess, your more traditional shape plate. It has a nicely defined foot. It has a good surface to eat on. And then it has a big lip, something to hang on to. And then with this foot, it helps them stack into each other nicely. They don't shimmy around. And I can catch this measurement more consistently a whole lot easier than this one. So this is uh, what I'm going to be throwing for you guys today. Uh, this is an 11 inch dinner plate so I'll throw them a little bit larger than that due to shrinkage, right? My stoneware shrinks about 12, 12 and a half percent it, uh, at cone 10. So we're going to do this dish. Uh, I use three pounds for these plates and uh, are you ready? Here we go. We are, let's talk about plaster bats for a minute and how to, how I throw these bats. So this is, uh, this is one of the, what the heck do they call these? These are bat mate. I think that's what they're called by, uh, Shem brand, X-I-E-M. Sorry if I butchered that name, Shem tools. And it's kind of stiff, so I just put this in water and I'll explain this here in a second. But, uh, this gets soaked. I'll wring it out a little bit, and this goes down over our bat pins, okay? And you'll understand here in just a second. So that goes down first, and then this is a hydro bat, this is a plaster bat, and um, these have pinned, this is a pinned bat. And so I use this because these bats, they'll rock and it makes it really wobbly and hard to throw straight without having your bat, bat dance around. So I put the, the bat mate down and then that helps bite that really good so I don't get a bunch of wobble. There it is. There it is. Okay, so now that's on there good. Now we're gonna put this, I've measured a couple things with my plates. So this is a gauge, and I'm sure most of you have used or seen one of these. <clears throat> I'll take a ruler. Now this is if I'm setting up for my first plate or I want to throw a specific size plate. I'll put my ruler at the center at zero, and then if I want an 11 inch plate, I need to find the radius of that, so that would be half, right? So five and a half inches would be finished. But I need to take into consideration the shrinkage of the clay as it's fired. So I need to add about 12% to that. So I'm gonna back that up a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact, a little wider on the 11. And I can make that final adjustment when I trim to make them all exactly even. You know what I mean? Okay, so I'm gonna back that up to about, that's gonna be close to 12 inches by the time it's all said and done. And I'll make the final adjustments, like I said, when I trim. So I'm setting at about five and three quarters. All right, so that's set. That's the width of my plate. The other thing that I do 
before or as I'm throwing the series or a set of things is I use a caliper. And I've already measured this and this width is what? What is this at? So I'm sitting at right at nine inches. I like to have at least an eight inch eating surface, maybe a little bit more. Once I make the first one, then I'll set this exactly where I want it. So like I said, we're sitting at nine. Maybe we'll stick right at nine. Let's, let's just go there for now. Okay, I'm starting with three pounds of stoneware. This is CN1 from Rocky Mountain Clay. Before I start, I'm gonna to wanna to clean my bat really good. Let's talk about these plaster bats a minute. So I use plaster um, for a couple reasons. I definitely like to use plaster bats on anything that has a wider base than say five, six inches. I will use a potter's knife or a felting knife, if you will, to remove most things from the plastic bats or just a wire. I don't want to leave any clay behind when I pull these plates off of here. And it also, I don't have to cut them off if I'm using these plaster bats because the water wicks through the bat and that way the piece dries evenly. So when this is ready to be pulled from the bat, I don't have to cut it, it just releases. And uh, we'll see if we can get there today with this. So here we go. With the plaster bat, I will add a little extra water because it's gonna soak in right away. And then, always good and firm. Here we go. Always coning up, and pushing back down. And we're gonna give that one more time. Back down. A little more water, push. Okay, so we're centered. There's a couple different ways we can approach a plate. One, we can open this up and rake this all the way out. But that makes it hard because oftentimes when you're pulling so far with this clay, it wants to fold over. It's hard to keep that toe leading as we push out. So more and more when I do plates, I'm just gonna keep pushing this down. I'm just gonna keep pushing this down, working it down. You can take your fist, push in here, and just start raking this out. See that? You've got a lot of force and a lot of strength. And what's really important is keeping that toe leading. Otherwise, we can trap and fold air over that. So just like when I'm making anything else, I want to set my base before I really start raking this out. So let's see where we're at. I know this is pretty thick right now, but maybe not too terribly thick. I'm going to go down just a little bit more because I want to be sure I can have enough to cut a nice deep foot into this plate. So let's push that down just a little bit more. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna flatten it just so I have a point of reference so that I can see where I need to take the rest of this down to. And as you can see, I've got quite a bit of clay to move still. So I'm gonna keep just plowing my fist through this and raking this out. It dries pretty quick when you have a whole hand in there. So do keep it wet. Okay. I'm just gonna keep pulling that out. And at some point, I'm gonna take my favorite green rib, right? And I'm gonna come back to the middle. And now I'm just gonna keep pushing this out. Keep pushing this out. And I'm going to keep an eye on this size right here. Just a little bit at a time. Keep working that back. 
This also compresses the bottom very well, which is very important because that stops us from producing S cracks as they dry and get bisque fired. Keeping an eye on our measurement. Okay, we're getting close. And then as I go here, I want to make sure that I am because it's hard to see exactly level. I'm just going to come back here and just spot check this a couple times and see where I'm at. Mm. I'm using the wider side of the tool, as you can see. And I'm going to make one last push to bring this to size. And as I do this, it also starts to form the wall where I'm going to pull up a little bit. Close, a little bit more. That is just right there, just a bump. I'm going to use the sharper side now. A little water on there. And really make sure I got this flat. And dig in and form that wall. Because we still have to pull that lip up a little bit. One last pass, a little cleanup here. Making sure we got a nice, even, good base. Well compressed, flat. Okay, let's see where we're at. Okay, that's pretty good right there. That's gonna change a little bit as I get my hands in there and start moving this clay around. So, we've got our base set. We were able to push that toe all the way out, and that's the important thing. We didn't fold the clay over and let it flop over onto the bat. So that's really good. <clears throat> I'll take my tool and just clean this up a little bit so that when I get my hands down there, it doesn't throw me off. Okay, a little bit of water, and this is kind of tough. You gotta really pinch under there. And I'm actually pushing the form back in a little bit, which is okay. I'll show you what I mean. Because I had to dig in there to grab that clay, I've actually lost a little size, but that's okay. I'm going to bring it back out here in a minute. Okay, one more pull. Good. Okay. Let's see how much clay we have left down there. There's just a little bit there. That's okay. Let's come back in here now. I'm going to take the flat side of this tool and I'm going to straighten up that wall and push my form back out just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then, see how it kind of rocks in a little bit? I'm going to straighten that wall up just a little. pretty good. Okay, let's check our measurement. Right back where we were. Okay, very good. Now, let's flatten this one more time. Make sure we're good and flat because we're just about done here, guys. I 
get this water out of here so I can see that line really good. Make sure I'm happy with the inside. Feel if it's flat, it feels pretty flat. I'm gonna scrape the water off here one more time. So I want this to dry. I wanna trim this today and I wanna show you guys the magic of the plaster bat. Okay, so before I fold this wall down, I'm gonna take my chamois and I'm gonna clean this lip because I just wanna clean it right now. Let's talk about thickness of plates real quick. I have a couple dishes that I've made in years past. I have some dishes that are eight, nine years old in my kitchen. Some of them are much thinner than this. The more plates I throw and the older that they get, I'm happy with a little more thickness on them. Now there's a fine line between too thick and just enough thickness. And that's for you to determine. But I am at the point in my career where I will not go any thinner than that on a plate, just for longevity and durability. For me personally, uh, if I cannot throw it in the dishwasher, it has no value to me. <laughs> okay, so here we go. You ready to push this down? This is all I do to push it down. I'm gonna come down here at the bottom and I'm just gonna go and just push this right over, just like that. Okay, so now I form that plate, that lip on the plate, and you can see that's a nice measurement. That's right where I wanted to land on my gauge. Just enough to where I can see a little space. I kind of have to make a slight mental note exactly how far away it is, but that's pretty dang good. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull this water out of here. I'm gonna try and hit this lip a little bit before I go any further, just kind of flatten this and take that groove out of there if I can. If not, I'll get it when I trim. It's a little soft. I'm gonna stop there and leave that for a minute. Okay, the last thing I'm going to address. <clears throat> Before I finish these, if you look right here where the wall meets the foot, this is a pretty nice and gradually sloped wall, and I don't mind that at all. And that's just gonna kind of depend on how I'm feeling that day, what I like, or possibly what, uh, what the individual who's buying the plates had asked for. So I'm actually going to give a little more definition in there and take that in just a little bit. I'm going to use my green rib and then I have to decide whether I want a very sharp and chiseled edge in there or something a little softer because this rib has, you know, I have a choice on either one of those corners and I'm going to use the softer side. So I'm going to start in the middle here and just give this another good pass and then as I get into that corner, I'm just going to hold steady and just push in and define that corner just a little bit. And I think that adds a lot. Just giving that one little line. And then I'm gonna take a sponge and just soften that corner down a little bit. And that plate is done, guys. I'm gonna clean up these lines here as it firms up. It's a little too soft to push my metal rib into it right now, so I'm just gonna hold off on that. I'm gonna take one pass in here, though and clean the inside really good so I don't have to come in here and tinker too much more. And I'm just gonna clean this off. Try not to lose the definition that I just put in there. And there we go. Got a plate, guys. Okay. All right, we're gonna let this guy dry and I'm going to show you how nice and easily this uh, peels off the plaster bat. Our plate is pretty dry. Um, it's, it's almost ready to release on its own. I know I said you don't have to knife these. I am gonna just loosen this just a little bit and you'll get the idea here. But I just have to break the seal a little bit. And I've just got my knife down and low and I'm just nice and easy. Just breaking that seal. Just I didn't go all the way under, just enough to kind of loosen it up. And now, it's still just a little wet, but we're gonna get it. It's gonna pop loose here in just a second. There it goes. And voila, 
the plate is free. You can see, apart from where my knife was, how uh, nice and flat the bottom is. So we're gonna flip this over and get ready to trim this real quick. Okay, so we're gonna trim this now. And I generally use a Giffen grip. I'm sure most of you have used them and seen them. I like them, they're easy, they're safe. You don't have to worry about your pots going flying across the room, which is always nice. But this is a fun tool that we have here in the studio that we use for bowls, plates, lower, lower objects for sure. I wouldn't throw the, I would not trim a mug or something tall on this, something narrow. This is, again, I guess we're giving a good add to Shem today. This is a sticky bat. And it comes just as this foam piece. It has an adhesive back and you have to purchase a bat to glue it down to. And then it just goes, you know, like normal on your wheel head. Okay, so then we take our plate and it has these nice rings for us to help center it up. And just a little bit. It's kind of hard to tap a plate onto center so you gotta just kind of shimmy it and eyeball it, almost there. So I use two standard trimming tools. Um, this one is my favorite by far. It has so many different angles and edges and corners. This is the mud tool, I think they call it the trim all. I'm not certain, but um, I buy a couple of these a year and then I'll take my little Dremel tool and I'll sharpen the edges down as best I can and try and get as much use out of this. This is, uh, this is a Dolan. I like all the Dolans. I have many different shapes and sizes. But the most important thing, guys, I cannot express to you how important it is to have sharp trimming tools, especially working with a wide surface area. You want the tool to do the job and you don't wanna to have to muscle through this clay. Because if I have a dull tool and I just start pushing on this, I'm going to cave this plate in. I want to keep this flat. So apart from a sharp trimming tool, you're going to want to make sure that your piece is set up well and is leather hard. If there's a lot of flex in this, let it dry a little bit longer. Okay, so let's get started here. I'm going to start with the Dolan. And the first thing I'm going to do is just round this edge over and start to bring some shape into the foot. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is bring that over a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. Now let's go a little bit more. Let's clean that edge in as best we can. There we go. So I've kind of folded that over a little bit, as you can see. Let's come down there into that nose just a little. Looks like I'm out of center just a little bit. Let's see if we can find that. Bring that over just a little. There we go, that's better. Okay, so I've rounded that over a little bit. A little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the corner of this tool and I'm gonna start to form the outside of my foot. See that? See that foot coming into play? Get a good grip on it, because this tool wants to chatter. So if you don't have a good firm grip on this, you're gonna end up with a lot of bumpies in your pot. Okay, so that's a pretty nice tall foot. And then I'm gonna bring this down, I'm gonna rock this and blend this shoulder in, leaving that foot standing up tall. So I'll just take this guy, get a little large, I might need a smaller trimming tool here. Yep, we're gonna have to use a smaller one. I can't quite get into that corner as I want to. So I'm just gonna bring this down. And I do want a little slope into it. And that's what's great about this tool. Now I can use this little narrow nose to reach in to corners that I can't with a larger trimming tool. Okay, and you see how we've brought that in. I'm gonna add just a little bit more definition to our foot right there. Maybe soften it a little bit. And one more pass down the side. Let's get that nose in there good, there we go. That looks really nice. I like that. Okay, so now 
I always start and finish this edge before I move into here because if I don't finish this, it's going to change the geometry of where my foot lands. If I'm too wide and I want to bring this in, then I have already lost it if I've started. Okay, so let's make, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a line, just a nice little light line. Whoop. Steady up here a little bit. Let's erase that and start over. I'm going to take and just nice and easy, just mark the inside of my foot. So that's a starting point to gauge how thick my foot is going to be. Okay, so I'm going to leave that there for a minute. I'm going to switch back over here to the Dolan and I'm going to start to trim this guy out. And this is what I'm talking about, having a sharp tool. I don't want to have to push on this surface because I it's a big span and I don't want to push it down. I don't want to crack it. I don't want to break it. Okay. So I'm just hogging that out. Remember how thick I left that for this very reason because I want to be able to have a nice sturdy foot. There we go. Let's bring all this down to there now. Get a good grip on it. You don't want your tool chattering. You can hear it trying a little bit. If it starts, stop, get a better grip on it and go back. There we go. That's looking better. See, I'm getting a little chatter in there. Let's see if we can get rid of that. Where's the other tool here? This edge is very sharp and it does a good job for me when I want to pull that out of there. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I'll come back and clean that up in just a sec. Let's set the thickness of our foot real quick. I'm gonna trim this down just a little bit. There we go. There's my foot. I'm happy with that width. I like that quite a bit. Let's come back in here and clean this all up one time. Tapping just to see how much thickness I have and I have enough clay left to take another pass. dirty still let's take one more light pass see if we can clean that up really good the dry trimmings get in there and they get pinched behind the tool and that's what's causing some of those ridges in there so sometimes you have to make a couple passes stopping in between <laughs> cleaning your tool out good all right let's take another pass with this guy now let's see if we can't clean this edge up and define this a little bit good that's better I'm gonna flatten this foot just a little bit and I can do that with my fingers you can see just kind of give that a little definition it's nice okay not bad is pretty good. I would like to make one more pass on that though. Try and clean that up one last time. Pretty good, guys. I'm gonna get the chum out of the corner here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Just one light pass, just to kind of pick all those chunks out of there. And then I'm gonna take a sponge and a rib and clean the bottom. There's a few in there. Let's see if we can get it out with the rib. The stoneware oftentimes wants to leave a bunch of ridges and chunks, and it's harder than, say, uh, working with like a porcelain or a B mix or something that is much softer and has more refined properties to it. So let's come in here. I'm going to take the metal rib 
and I'm just going to make sure it's nice and clean first. And I'm going to just drag this from the center and just get all that off. Getting cleaner. Almost there. And take that corner and get in right there. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then one last thing, I'm going to take and hit the top of this and make sure this is nice and flat. And then just a little bevel on the side here, just to give it a directional change on the profile. Adds a little bit of aesthetics to it. Okay. Now I'm going to take my fancy sponge here and I'm going to just clean all this up really nice, hitting all these corners. No sharp edges. That looks pretty good guys. Maybe one quick pass here just to kind of soften everything up. I don't want to add a lot of water to this right now. It's much thinner, it's getting dry. I don't want it to rehydrate and possibly sag or lose its form. So I'm just being really cautious about how much water and how much pressure I'm adding here. Okay, but that is our plate, guys. Very nice. All right, I'm gonna let this water dry before we uh, sign and uh, put it on the shelf to dry. Last step in the plate. It's good and firm, that water has dried. This is just red iron oxide, and I picked this up from my old mentor, Bill Wilson. It was kind of, it's kind of an old pottery thing, and there's still a lot of people that do it. I like it. Um, I like to put a red dot here. I'll just put something in the middle. Maybe a little something like that. And then I'll sign through that. And what that does is creates a nice contrast between the signature and the clay. It's hard for me when people just sign in the clay and you can't read it. I like, I like to have some kind of contrast, like I said, so I can see something. So I'll do that and then uh, We'll take, I have these metal, these are metal stamps. And just something kind of fun I picked up one year and now I just kind of do it all the time now. I like to stamp the Roman numerals of the year into here. Just kind of gives it something else, a little fun to look at and wonder, or maybe you can read Roman numerals and you know, but it is still 2020 for a few more days. And so I get to do MMXX. So the fewer the stamps, the nicer. But that is that, and then I will let that red stain dry, and then I'll sign. I don't like to sign the clay while it's still wet. It smudges, smears, creates wet chunks and ridges that, you know, I want to see a nice crisp signature on the bottom, you know. So we'll do that in just a moment. Okay, the last step, and we're done with uh, the plate. You're going to think this is kind of funny, but I really like the lines that this leaves. I sign my pots with a pen, <laughs> any ballpoint pen, and I'll show you why as I sign it. It makes nice, crisp, and clean lines. And I just really like that. And then the other thing I'll say, you see all the chunks on there and all the boogers, leave those alone until it's, until it's bisque fired really. Cause I don't want to smear or smudge any of that because once they're in there and embedded, they're not coming out and it just wrecks the overall look of your signature. So just uh, my suggestion, but please do whatever you like. Flip that back over. It's nice and firm. Let's see how it is to our other plate. Hey, that's pretty good, right? Not bad, huh? Not bad at all. So, 
plates and they stack very nicely. So if I were throwing a set to this, obviously I'd want it to be a little bit bigger, but there's the plate guys. So anyway, thanks for sticking around today. Let, uh, let me know what you think. Please subscribe and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Have a good one.